So there's a big gap here, John, in between the two sheds, and uh, you put yeah, a new well, project to mind here. Yeah, well, um, going back in history, um, that was where the first silage pit was. Um, so we've just uh, we've just knocked the silage here as a concrete wall silage pit. Um, we use it as a as a FYM store. So we've just um, knocked all that down and have left a gap here that one day we thought we'd need to put a new parlour in. So we're ready to go now. We'll start to develop this site and then um, it'll all come together with the three buildings with the parlour in the middle. Yeah. Uh, and we won't have to uh, have any temporary parlour milking equipment. We can just build, uh, yeah. build a new one and, and move in one day, hopefully. That's the plan. Okay. So, yeah. It's in its um, destruction stage at the moment, I think <laughs> I call it. Yeah. yeah. So, it, it's another rotary you're going for? Yeah, we're going for yeah, a bigger rotary this time. Um, I think we're running... Uh, we run about 12, 13 hours a day at the moment milking. Mm. And I'm conscious that in the next 10 to 20 years, I don't know whether we can get guys to do those sort of long shifts. So rightly or wrongly, we're gonna put a, um, a more cows per hour system in. Um, probably go back to when I started where you could milk in three hours. Yeah. And uh, it's a bit more, um, user, user fr uh, labor friendly and farmer friendly. Mm. You know, people want to have a better work-life balance in the future. So we hope that that's the, that, that's, that's what we, um, what we got right. Okay. So it, is it a 72 point rotary? 72, yeah. 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 So gear. Sh hmm? gear? Gear 72 point, yeah. Um, so we're hoping, we're gonna milk about 900 cows uh, through it, so we're hoping to do that in three and a half hours. Okay, three times a day. Three times a day. Yeah, yeah. Good. So where we're standing, it's rotary going to be here. Yeah. Collecting yard. Pretty behind. much, pretty yeah. much where where we are now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then a collecting yard, and then we've got a handling pen on the right. So we've got we've got plenty of room. We're fortunate that we've got plenty of plenty of length. Anyway, we can only just get the seventy two in between the two buildings. So okay. we were going to go sixty, and then. Uh, we decided that uh, we can get a 72, so yeah. that's what we're going to do. Okay. Yeah. So David is helping you, David Walton is helping you maybe? Yeah, David's the, man, uh, David's the man that's going to tell me where all the drains and all the, all the posts are going to go. and yeah. um, levels and... Levels and yeah. do all the quantity surveying. Um, yeah, so yeah. Uh, I, um, potentially of me getting it wrong, uh, less wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, minimising mistakes, I hope, anyway. Like, yeah. maybe not everything will be perfect, but yeah. it's trying to get most things right. Yeah, well, we've, we've got plenty of things wrong in the past that we've had to redo, so it, it's just getting another set of eyes, experienced eyes, that, that, that will question what we're doing yeah. and why we're doing it, and that, that makes you go away and think, yeah, well, we'll give that a rethink. Yes. So we're in February now, early February. Mm -hmm. So ideally, when would you be? <laughs> Um, my target date for milking is the 1st of September. Okay, yeah. Um, so the, the schedule is that um, the parlour building will be up by the end of this month. Um, then we've got some, some form work to do for the deck. Uh, and they tell me that they're ready to put the equipment in on the 1st of May. Okay. And that'll take four months, they told me. Okay. So I've got the 1st of September on the radar, whether we actually make it to the 1st of yeah. September. <coughs> History As I know, always, things always get put back. Yes. But we don't want to be starting on the 1st of December. I know, that are coming into Christmas and yeah. whatever team yeah. we're hoping you'll that we'll get it. we'll get it flowing before, yeah. before the end of the year anyway. Yeah. yeah, well I think the key thing you said is that you have, a, you have your parlour running already. Yeah. That pressure won't be there, which is a real problem on some farms. Yeah, yeah. no, we've got, we're putting pressure on it as we're building up cow numbers over the over these months now. So um, that's gonna be running even longer and longer. Yeah. But, um, you know, the uh, the Christmas present to the staff is, they will get a faster parlor okay. by Christmas. Hopefully. So they're gonna put up with, uh, yeah. um, they'll, they'll put up with that, they tell me. Yeah. yeah, so. And look, it's obviously a big investment, but that's the reality mm. of a business. Yeah. You can't stop um, investing. You know, yeah, we've been investing forever. Yeah. And I think, you know, businesses do, have got to grow. Um, 
that's that's how that's how you move on. Yeah. And the next gen, I, what I wanted it to be attractive for the next gen to want to to do if they want to do cows, you know, um, it's going to be okay. And I so. guess if you leave it too long, that jump is too big. Then maybe where yeah. you don't invest maybe for a ten-year period. Yeah. Yeah. You can yeah. leave it. Yeah, I think there's only a couple of years we haven't been investing in the last twenty. Yeah. Five or six, is it? And uh, you know, when I look at other businesses, um, you know, they seem to be investing all the time. Yes. No matter what sort of business it is, really. Yeah. What's this here? So we've got the Weybridge over there. Yes. Which are obviously put in the wrong place now. Yeah. Got that wrong. So we're moving the Weybridge. So um, we we weigh everything everything in, even the silage we weigh in. So um, I and like to know what waste we've got. Okay. And minimise, always minimise the waste what we've okay. got. Yeah. So all your feed coming in as well? Your All the feed coming in, yeah, all the silage. Um, deli I mean, the deliveries, they've got Weybridge. But if we want to check them... Yes. We can run them over the Weybridge. Okay. Um, You've so many inputs coming in; it's important. Yeah, to yeah. It, it does take a lot of uh, keeping up with, yeah, and yeah. the paperwork and all that, and making sure that um, everything tallies up with with uh, the invoices, that okay. sort of thing. So yeah, yeah, because you, you're talking, you know, it adds up to a lot of money a month, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's a huge cost yeah. for you. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're just passing the calf rearing area here. Yeah, this was a, um, a sort of, uh, we stuck it up a couple of years ago. Um, we, we bought a, a shed that we could unbolt and move. And uh, we're going to be unbolting that and moving it anytime soon because it's now in the way. Yeah. So uh, we wanted some, some wean calf accommodation. Um, we're always short of accommodation, as most people are. So um, it was just a quick fix. Mm. And we've done another one around the corner this last year as well, so. Um, so it gives you flexibility to move it again. Yeah, and, it'll yeah. just unbolt yeah. and, and we can move it, yeah, take yes. it to bits and it's yeah. just like a Meccano set, isn't it? Good. So uh, yeah, we're gonna stick it over there where that trailer is. Okay. That shed over there, is that for dry cows? It is, one? yeah. Yeah, yeah we, I know we didn't go there. We've got dry cows and in calf heifers. Yeah. I put it up a few years ago as a straw shed and then we extended it yeah. a few years ago. So we've got, there's a couple of hundred in that shed, yeah. Okay. And yeah. say your shed here, then that's the calf shed. That's, that's, that, the, that the, that's the bucket shed. Yes. So that's the the have a calf bucket shed. Yeah. Um, we're wearing them on on teak buckets in there. Yeah. Okay. So we've got the these sheds are south facing, so it's quite nice sunshine when we get the sunshine. So we want to try and keep that on the baby calves. Right. Um, and you've gale breakers on that shed as well. You do. Yeah, that'll roll. That'll bit. roll up. Yeah. yeah they'll they'll roll up. Uh, they sh um, you know they should be rolled up. Uh, on daylight today with the sunshine, we're getting rolled up uh, and when it's raining or whatever. Because um, we actually access it with the with the bedder through that side. Okay. So there's no manual bedding. It's all, yeah. How often it's would all you tractor. Do uh, uh, probably every other day. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we, do, we, we try not to have anything manual. Mm. Um, it doesn't tend to get done if it's if it's too manual. Yeah. Yeah, if it's also, if it's, you know, um, I wouldn't say automatic, but easy to do, it, it, it tends to get done. That's our sort of strategy, really. Just looking at equipment-wise then, do you do a lot of your own? No, that's contractor. It's all contractor's equipment? Yeah. Okay. The only sort of uh, um, field work we do is uh, mowing, tedding. Um, we don't do any chopping or anything like that. And uh, uh, cultivation, um, so cultivation for reseeding and, and maize ground. So, um, yeah, we don't tend to own big kit. There's plenty of big contractors in the area. Yeah, we've, yeah. Got, we've got three good contractors that do various different things. Uh, we've got a specific guy who's really, really good on, on pumping, uh, pumping slurry and tanking slurry. And then we've got a couple of um, uh, grass contractors and maize contractors. So, you know, uh, they're not at loggerheads with each other. We all work together. Mm. So if you want a two or three choppers in the maze, we can uh, we can pull that in and, and get it shifted quick. There's enough yeah. business for everybody there. Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, as our business has grown, so is theirs. Yeah. So and it's, you need them as much as they need you. Absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. Years and years ago, we used to do our own silage, so we know <laughs> we know the difficulties of doing our own. Yes. And uh, so we do appreciate uh, good contractors, and I think going forward. It's absolutely paramount you have a good contract. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely right. Especially yeah. with rules and regs on 
uh, spreading slurry and all that sort of thing, mm. you know. Um, I'm going to call them professional contractors. Yeah, they are got to that yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Gear needs to be big, it needs to be well maintained. Yep, yeah. Well, if they, you know, if we can, af um, if, if we can afford to um, use them and they've got, they've got a good kit, big kit, they'll move over the ground fast. Yeah. Job's done um, and, and everyone's a winner, aren't they? Yeah. And we try and make it as easy as we can for them to do the jobs that um, we task them with, you know, things like large gateways, large turning areas, all that sort of thing that um, makes it quick and efficient. Yeah. Yes. Just looking at your land here, then, see mm. you have 160 acres of land here. You said we've got about 160 land. acres on this site. Yeah, where all the all the dairy is. Yeah, and then we've got um, um, a couple of farms next next door, a couple yeah. of blocks of land that we rent. Okay. Yeah. And so then we've got satellite ground, uh, wherever we can get it really for growing maize. So is this all grass silage then your land here? It's all grass, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. we've got, uh, here we've got about 450 acres of grass, pretty much yes. all in, in one block. Yeah. Okay, good. This is a calf company, suppose? Yeah. yeah, yeah, local company. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen the, I've seen the um, that's how I picked up the, uh, I was watching you guys, because mm. uh, when, when they put it up, I said, well, Alan, isn't it? Yeah. I said, oh, none of us like this, this no airflow at the back. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but it's proved this, this cold, cold dish winter, it's proved to be really good. So what age uh, cows would you put in here, typically? You'll go Anything. six days on this one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Depending on, because that's so small and built a long time ago, it's hard to keep it as clean as possible to stop crypto. So if it's been recently cleaned, they won't come in there for six days. If it hasn't been cleaned a while, we might put them in at three. Yeah. Uh, just because we're trying to, we want to get them away from that. We've, we've had a, we don't treat for crypto at all anymore. Um, basically a few years ago, I, I, well, I just decided that Halicule, it wasn't working anyway, because mm -hmm. people who use Halicule, they still get outbreaks. So we went on to this powder, which probably <coughs> didn't actually really do much, but not using Halicure, we, te we tend now to have like, the exact same rate. You still get outbreaks like you do with Halicure, but it's more about cleanliness. Mm. So it's just constantly changing the straw, constantly cleaning it, yeah. everything being cleaner. But because, it, because that's way too small now for what the position we're in, it's just, um, yeah, keep, keep, keep moving them to cleaner areas all the time. And then they'll come in here, well, the Angus cars will come in here for three weeks, a month, depend, depending on weight. So at the minute, they all go to uh, Blade. Blade Farming? Yeah. yeah. Um, probably on about 50 kilos? Yeah, probably average, yeah, yeah. when they go. Um, but I mean, they'll take them at 45 at, as long as they're 10 days old, and then it's weighted with the days as they go yeah, up. Yeah. So they're not, they're not ever too long. We, we, we think it costs about £35 a week per calf to keep them. So the more weeks you're keeping them, you, if you're losing £35 every week, you want to get them away as quick as possible. Yeah. 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 So it's either Halston or... We're on, se we're on sex, yeah. well, we're on sex black and white, and now we're on sex beef. Yeah. Okay. So we've got no conventional semen going in now. The first ones of them are coming in May, aren't they? Yeah. 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 So we've been on conventional beef for a while. Yeah. yeah. And then we just recently swapped. And that's Angus. Yeah. 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 So nearly pretty much all of the young stock will be on sex. Um, Holstein, Holstein, black and white, and then some of the some of the milking herd will have sexed, uh, depending on where they are in the genomics yeah. uh, lineup. So um, yeah, we've got a, quite a lot of quite a lot of cows um, that only have, have sexed um, a sex calf once once mm. in a lifetime. Yeah, yeah. Because the, just the, genomics are, the genetics are moving on. You, you do so you, you do get outliers. We've got some cows that are having sex and there. I think we've got the oldest one we've got is five years old. Five, five lakhs, yeah. 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 Well, fi yeah, five lactation, not five years old, but that's have, still having sex because yeah. it just, mat just matters where it is in the table. So yeah. we've started breeding off that more in the last 18 months, I'd say. Mm. So yeah, our, our sort of milk yield increase is, is coming from genetic gain. We're not actually doing anything different. I know. Just feed wise or whatever. Yeah. It's just, you know, we, you know, we're cheating well, if you feed, like. Feed, feed's been worse the last two years as well. Mm. Mm. Well, feed's been worse last two years because the starch levels of maize have just been down mm. yeah. a lot. Mm. Um, so hopefully we can hopefully we can get that back up. But I mean, everyone's just down, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yep.